cordage, or what you might call rope or string made from the land, is one of three major inventions that archaeologists consider set us uh, on the present track we're on today. The other two being a sharp edge, such as stone tools, and the ability to create fire. So, uh, cordage uh, has obviously many, many applications in a, say, a survival situation, but it's also a great way to connect with the land, to get children making things straight off the landscape. Um, and just have a lot of fun. I will warn you that uh, I find the process fairly addicting. Um, without even realizing it, my hands will just get busy making cordage from almost anything I come across. But it's a great way to keep learning and see what'll work and learn about the strength of materials. So what we're looking to create is basically something like this. I'm gonna show you in this video uh, a technique. It's called a two-ply reverse wrap, uh, as well as a, a few other techniques that come into play along with it. So uh, this piece here is some commercial cordage made out of coconut fiber, but you can see it has a similar pattern to, to this out of a material called raffia. Um, so to get started, I suggest using, well, really whatever you have on hand. Use some commercial string if you have that already. Um, but a great uh, material that you can pick up very inexpensively at uh, a craft store is called raffia. Now raffia is mistakenly often referred to as a grass, but uh, what it actually is, is the, um, the shredded, uh, sort of the rib off of the leaves of the raffia palm tree, which I believe is in Madagascar. Um, so you buy a, a bag of this, which comes with uh, it's probably about a half a cubic foot or so. It's a lot of material for around five bucks. So it's very affordable to get a lot of material to work with over the long term. Uh, uh, but really use anything you have to get started. What you're after is some long stringy fibers. So in the natural world, what do you got? You have everything from grasses to palm leaves to bark off of trees. Uh, if you switch to animal species, you also have uh, hair and fur, sinew, rawhide. Um, the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, some uh, plants have stalks that you can proce process fibers out of, such as milkweed and dogbane, um, or leaves, like with yucca. So. Um, to get started, you want to pick yourself out uh, a strand, or maybe several. I like to, when I'm working with raffia, I like to, to bunch up a few strands here and I just lay them together. I'm going to treat them as if they are one strand. So lay them together, hold them somewhere roughly in the middle um, uh, to get started. So I'm going to start right here. and, and uh, Many fibers, uh, raffia specifically, work better if they're a little moist. So I usually just take this and give it a quick lick on there um, to get that just a little damp. You'll notice that with raffia, it's a little waxy, um, and uh, these uh, the fibers can be flat. And we're going to start to roll them. So having them both a little damp um, uh, and a bunch of them together helps them to roll easier. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm going to demonstrate this and show it um, and explain it from a right-handed perspective. Uh, if you're left-handed, of course, you can either learn it this way, or it's also a, a pretty quick flip uh, to, to go back and do it the other way. So I'm going to start around the middle, and with my thumb and index finger of each hand, I'm going to pinch the fibers about an inch or so apart from each other. Now with my right hand, I'm going to take those fibers and just start to twist them up, to roll them up. Okay, and you'll notice the section in between is getting tighter, right? building some tension. Notice that I'm not continuing to move my hand down to twist. I'm staying in one spot. What I'm trying to do is really twist up just that one inch section really tight. Build and build and build. And what we want to have happen is get so much tension that that kinks over on itself. Okay, So we get that little kink on there. If, if you're finding that you're twisting and twisting and it's just not kinking up, um, two suggestions. One is uh, you can bring your fingers a little closer together. So as I'm as I'm twisting, if I'm pulling out too much, I'm not going to let that string kink. But if I twist and then just bring my hands together, you'll see that it wants to twist on its own. So again, if I'm twisting, it's not kinking, bring the hands slightly closer together and it kinks where it wants to. Uh, the other thing is if you are continuing to move down, you're never, it's going to be much more difficult to build the tension you need in between. So stay nice and close, inch, inch and a half to, uh, apart from your hands and let that kink up. So once you have that kink, that's going to become the end of our string. Um, you can also, you could start this whole process simply by taking two strands and knotting them together for your end, but I like to begin without a knot. So twist it up, get that kink, 
And I'm going to turn that to the side here. And that's, again, the end of my, my strand of cordage. So with my left hand, thumb and index finger, I'm going to go ahead and take hold of that kink, pinch the kink. Okay, hold it right there. And now I want you to think about these two strands that we've now created as the top and the bottom. Okay, if I was holding it this way, it might be left and right, but I like to operate this way with a top and a bottom. So predominantly, I'm going to work with the top strand here. I'm going to take my, my right hand again. If I need to, I'll moisten this up. And go ahead and twist. Now notice the direction I'm twisting. It's the same direction I was twisting to begin with uh, to make the kink. I'm twisting sort of away from myself that way, where the top is going away, like, like so. Twisting that way, as opposed to twisting towards myself this way. So roll it up, twist. Again, just isolate to a section of about an inch or so. Get that nice and tight. And then I'm going to take that top strand and wrap it over the bottom one. And the top strand becomes the bottom strand. So I'm going to take the new top strand, twist it up, and bring it over the bottom one. Now notice that I'm only, they're only switching places, so I'm not bringing this all the way around and back to the top again. I see that um, often when people are, are first learning this, um, there's a tendency to want to go all the way around. So, so take that top strand, give it one good twist. I like to just, um, just to kind of, yeah, just roll it once as opposed to keep twisting, keep twisting, keep twisting. Grab hold, roll away once, and then bring it over and down. Grab the new top string, twist, and bring it down. A few more times here. I'm going to twist that top one and bring it down. Hey, girls. Girls, now's not the time. Yeah, good shake. Thank you. Grab that top strand and roll it away from myself. Bring it over and down. Now a few clarifications here. You can see what we're getting already. This nice design. You want that sort of slash, um, either Z twist or S twist. It's often referred to as, depending on whether you do this left-handed or right-handed. And um, a few clarifications here. When I first explain this, I say you know twist this away. Um, a slightly different use of words here would be probably more beneficial second second time around explaining this um, instead of I think twist tends to create a visual of pinching these fibers and just twisting the way you might with a twist tie but as you can see that doesn't get us a whole lot of twist uh, out of those fibers so a better I think a better word to visualize it is to roll the fibers so if I grab between my thumb and index finger instead of clamping down really hard flattening those we want to create more of a circular cross-section on this. So I'm going to sort of bunch up those fibers and roll my fingers. You can see I'm, I'm letting those fibers roll and, and these fingers are sort of dropping back down the fiber a little bit. So I will roll and then I'm going to hold them there and bring them down. Again, roll the fibers and bring them down. The other thing I want to clarify is I'm not just taking the top fibers and bringing them over the bottom. If I did that, um, I, I often see uh, folks end up with sort of a, it looks like one strand is just wrapping, spiraling around the other one. But what we want is this nice, even twist where they're both wrapping. So, um, so the, the way I look at this is imagine here an invisible axis between these two fibers. So if these are each going up and down, same angle, imagine a dotted line right in between here. What I want to do is take those two fibers and flip them around that axis evenly. So the technique I like to use is I'll take that top one, roll it, and instead of just bringing it down, now that my hand is rolled over, I'll take these fingers, grab the bottom strand, and just flip it. And so you can see they both wrap pretty evenly around that axis. And now the top one is now the bottom one. So 
So again, twist and flip. And twist and flip. Once you build the muscle memory of this, you can get going pretty quickly doing this. Uh, a couple other things here is you'll notice where I started pinching the very tip kink there. Every time I twist this, my left hand is also traveling forward to pinch the, the latest twist. So as I twist and flip, the left fingers just move ever so slightly forward. It's almost uh, subconscious, as you'll find the whole process becomes. So flip, and then they just re-grab right there. The other thing I'm doing, which you can't really see here, is these fingers end up taking control of the end to keep tension on this. So you don't want to just keep hold down here and try to work this, and it starts to get awkward doing this way. Um, but also, if you just do this, this is kind of hanging out. So what I like to do is pinch with this, and I'm always applying a bit of tension here. And so as I twist, flip, and then move forward, this is sort of feeding it down that way. Keep on moving. Pretty soon, you can pick up some speed. And then this ends up becoming sort of like grandmother knitting while she's watching Jeopardy, where you don't, she doesn't even have to watch what she's doing. Um, and it just becomes really second nature. So, work at it, practice. Um, if you notice you're getting um, an uneven uh, pattern, where it looks more like one strand is kind of going around the other, it could be a tension issue, which comes from, again, either just put wrapping one around the other or not applying the same tension to both strands as you are flipping them. If you're, say, treating one tighter and keeping the other looser. And then one other tip is you'll notice every two or three uh, twists here, I'm sort of combing out the fibers. There's a, a real tendency for these to get uh, tangled, especially if you're working with uh, a lot of fibers or very stringy, long, lightweight fibers. And so I'll, I'll leave these sort of hanging out to the side and then every two or three strands because, because the ends there aren't twisting. So as I'm twisting up here, they're kind of getting wrapped around each other. So as I do this, every couple of strands, I just run my hand down and comb apart the fibers. And uh, I would definitely recommend building the habit of doing that. Otherwise, you may find that after after a few twists, your fibers are so tangled you can't actually separate them, and you may have to start over. So, keep on keeping on. And you'll see you can start to really pump out some cordage. So, um, it's a great, fun project, um, and uh, I've taught children as young as about four years old to do this and of course folks up to 104 or beyond can do this as well so uh, it's, it's just a great fun thing and uh, one, one note would be um, notice sort of a similar pattern when I teach this um, especially to children is for the first five minutes or so um, something happens that sounds a little bit like whining I can't do this it's too hard my fingers hurt but after that five minute mark something else amazing happens silence and everybody goes into this zone I've had folks call it meditative uh, the best babysitter in the world whatever it is people who seem to, to go into some zone whether they're connecting with something from their past or are just entranced by the process or because they're getting their hands working whatever it is uh, I've seen it pretty much universal where people just really enjoy the hell out of this so have fun with it we're gonna take a look at a few other techniques that come into play here as far as uh, things like splicing and doubling this back on itself and loops. You will notice that your hands may ache a little bit, your wrist and your fingers. Notice that it uh, seems like so many primitive skills uh, end up making your hands and joints really ache. And I think if you look in medicinal plant field guides, you'll often see that it seems like every other plant has some treatment for arthritis. And uh, I think for good reason. People figured that out.
even just a small diameter piece of cordage like this can be incredibly strong. I can't break that with a static pull, perhaps if I really bounced it, tugged on it with a dynamic load, it might break. <laughs> Shoulders popping there. Uh, but it's, it's pretty strong right from the get-go. You can make this, of course, many different diameters, add more fibers to begin with, or what we can do here is double this back on itself. So what I can do is take my cord, ideally after I've already uh, corded it all the way to the end, but I'm going to do the same thing, but now treating my one piece of cordage here as my one strand that I'll double over, uh, kink over on itself, and begin to twist. So if we start again from around the middle, you'll notice though, uh, if, I, if I twist away the same direction I did before, what happens is that the two plies actually twist apart. So when we double this back on itself, this is called a double reverse wrap in this case, I need to uh, reverse a few things. First thing I'm gonna do, again, if I do this from a right-handed perspective, instead of twisting away, I now need to twist this towards myself. So you'll see it tightening up even further. All right? twist, 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 until it wants to kink. And there's that kink. Just gonna lay that over to the side once again. Now again, if I take the top strand and twist away, it's going to loosen up on me. So I have a couple options. I could either work from the top strand, or I can switch to the bottom strand. In this case, I'm going to do that here. But again, I don't want to twist away. I need to twist towards myself so that tightens up. And then I'm going to bring it up and forward over the top one. So I'm just reversing a couple of things here. Twist towards myself and up and over. Everything else remains the same, like so. The alternative would be I could twist the top towards myself and bring it behind the bottom one, whichever one feels more, uh, more comfortable to you. Yeah. All the other technique things remain the same. sample here. You can see it's beginning to look a bit more like what we classify as rope. There we go. I think there's a, a beauty to that as well. So that's a double reverse wrap.